My name is Bill Calhoun and this is Keith Bunamitsu and once again we're part of a small group of fly fishermen in Southern California that target calico bass. And although only three of us in, in our angling group fish with the heavy lines, what does transcend any grain weight of line is a good fly. So today what we're going to show you are flies that we've worked on for many many years and these flies as of now are the most productive flies that we've been using in the local area. So today we've invited probably the most innovative fly tire amongst our group, Dave Valdez, and he's going to, along with Bill, is going to show you some of the most productive flies that we have found for fishing calico bass this summer. I want to introduce to you Dave Valdez, and uh, we're really happy to have Dave along with us because his innovative fly tying is part of the big success that we had this summer. So here he is to explain a couple of his flies. Well, when I first started fly fishing for calico bass several years ago, the standard clouser was the way to go I and mean, we got plenty of bites. But over the years we've developed a couple of flies that seem to get bit a lot better. Uh, most recently is this fly here. I call it the DV Thunderbird. Similar to a 50-50, uh, it's got the hackles, it's got the, the bucktail, but what sets it apart is the profile, the uh, silhouette that it gives off. It's a very large fly in the water but once you pull it out of the water, the material's packed down, makes it very easy to cast. Back in the water, it turns into a big fly again. And again, it's got that silhouette that when the fish see this coming down, it's very hard to resist. It's got some hackle flash in the belly, and it's got some shellapping for the pectoral fins, along with some crystal flash in the pectoral fin. And you can tie it with or without the reed guard. Uh, this particular one, we call it the radioactive because of the, uh, the bright colors. I also tie it in a, uh, a low rider color, which is a very bright, flashy, all of over gold that we use on bright sunny days. Uh, I have one that I call the Liberace color, which for those of you in the Southern California area know that the Liberace is a tan over orange with a lot of flash. We also tie it in a, uh, in a darker color, which is tan over red, uh, very similar to what we call the Calico Hunter, which is a popular color in the sw plastic swim baits. Okay, another fly that we like to use along the uh, rocky structure, like the Long Beach Breakwater Wall, is the uh, fly that I call the Chupacabra. It's uh, similar to the uh, Meat Whistler fly. Uh, it's tied on a jig hook, uh, but we did add some antennas, and we distributed the weight along the shank of the hook for a more horizontal fall. And what we're looking to do is imitate the isopods that live along the, uh, the rocky structured areas and that are really easy pickings for the bass when they get washed off the wall. Uh, also, a great fly for fish in the bays for big spotted bay bass. Uh, it's got rabbit skin, it's got marabou, it's got rubber legs. So when all this is in the water and there's a lot of movement, uh, it looks like a little uh, crustacean that's desperately trying to get back into the rocks. And when the fish see this, they just come right up and suck these things in all day long. So that's another great fly that we like to use as well. Another popular fly that we've been using around the uh, hard structure has been the sculpin head uh, from Fish Skulls. Very simple tie, nothing uh, too exciting about the tie, but the colors, uh, we like to fish the bright colors. This one I call the clown. It's got a light olive body, uh, two-tone orange and red belly, some orange pectoral fins, and some multicolored legs. Uh, also this one here has a weed guard, you can fish it with or without the reed guard, but very effective around the rocky uh, structure where you have gobies and small sculpin. We tie it in, like I said, the clown. We have the uh, pink and chartreuse, which is the radioactive color, and I also tie it in a grizzly tan, which uh, really uh, matches the hatch on a goby. This is a fly I called the party boy. Um, I wanted to call it the party girl, but because it's very flamboyant, Keith named it the party boy. So it's a direct knockoff of Dave's uh, Thunderbird fly, but it's got some different aspects to it. Uh, one of the things I like to do with some of my flies is just bang them through the, the kelp. Really hard, fast retrieves. It bangs off the kelp, it sends a lot of shock through the water, and those calicos key in on that. So this has a bigger acoustical footprint. Uh, the other thing is, because I'm stripping it through the kelp, I wanted the weed guard to be very substantial. So I tied in two pieces of 60-pound mason hard mono and uh, swept them back at an angle so they come off of the kelp really well. Uh, the other thing is, I've made this fly with the uh, extra-large dumbbell eyes in hopes that it would sink faster. And as a, a big fly, a big profile fly is sinking, it also puts off... Um, what I call a bigger acoustical footprint for those fish to hone in on. This is another fly that I tie. Uh, it's basically a more match the hatch type uh, pattern. 
um, all the different bait fish that run through the kelp. And once again, I like the 60 pound hard mason. I use two of them and wire them off at top. And uh, I run these through the kelp pretty, pretty fast. The other thing is uh, I like using the Mustad S71S uh, hook and that's because I can bend that back. I've bent Mustad hooks 90 degrees and they don't break. You know when you have your more designer series with the, so the lighter wire and the, and the small barbs and they're super sharp, I've broken too many of those. So uh, once again I don't like tying. I don't have to, look, have to go back and retie another fly to replace that for 15 minutes. So the uh, Mustad hooks are just day in day out extremely durable. So I, I've uh, just fallen in love with those hooks. The other thing I'm doing here that's a little bit different than you'll find in a lot of bait fish patterns is I use a lot of flashaboo and I lay it flat over the top and when the sun's high it, it refracts off of there so hard that it looks like little explosions. So uh, that really attracts the bass as well. Alright so thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to join us and letting us show you a couple of patterns that have been working great for us along the uh, local coast and islands. And hopefully these tips will help you become a more uh, proficient fly angler. So what we're going to do is Dave and Bill are going to post the recipe to the flies that we discussed today on our Facebook fan page at facebook.com forward slash the Calico Syndicate. So keep checking back with us on our Facebook page and uh, stay informed. And the next video will be out in about another week. So from Southern California, we thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Did I mention we tie these on the sculpin helmet heads? Ha 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 ha!